Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we've got custom cursors, Bevy mod picking upstreaming, and a couple of space games. This week a PR for an implementation of required components went up. If you have crates that are affected, or will be affected, and are interested in the ongoing next generation scene slash UI work, then this will be an important PR for you to check out and potentially give review on. And this week we also see a number of quality of life improvements as well as great new lands like custom cursors. Other work merged this week feels like groundswell work that will make for a great 0.15 release when it's ready. We also see some interesting crates this week like Bevy Transform Interpolation, which aid in the use of fixed time steps as well as some crates that slipped from last week's issue like Leafwing Input Manager 0.15. So let's kick it off with 14.284, which added custom cursors. In the updated Windows settings example, you can see a number of different cursors, including the Bevy logo itself as a cursor, which you can tell is a cursor because it can actually go outside of the window, as you can see here. And as we kind of get that middle point where the cursor actually is over the edge, it transitions into what you would expect on the rest of the operating system. This again is 14284, and you can see that new cursor movement in the window settings example. Inserting components also gets a boost this week with 14646, as well as 14787. These add panicking and non-panicking variants of insert if new. This effectively makes use of a new insert mode enum, where you can either choose to replace or keep the existing components. Insert if new specifically will attempt to insert a component and fail if the component already exists on the entity. This is particularly interesting when bundles have duplicate components. For example, a PBR bundle could be inserted onto an entity that already has a spatial bundle, and you can now choose to either replace or keep those original values. Next up in 14752, another quality of life improvement. This is a function added to entity commands to trigger observer events for the particular entity you're working on. There unfortunately is no demo of this behavior. So if you look at the source code in the PR, you can see that trigger on entity commands which is what you get after you spawn something in, effectively just delegates to trigger targets with the current entity selected. And moving on to some mesh 2D improvements. Last week, we saw an opaque pass with a depth texture get added to the 2D render pipelines. And this week, that work was optimized, moving from sorted render phase to binned render phase in 13091. The distinction between sorted and binned was something new in Bevy 0.14, so if you're unfamiliar with what that means, you can go check out the migration guide, which has some details. Also relating to mesh 2D improvements, 2D features were extended with a new alpha mask phase to support transparency in 14724. This all goes towards the mesh 2D improvements that are being tracked in 13265. And as requested, we are already working on a video explaining what the depth texture actually is and how you might be able to take advantage of it in 2D. So if you're interested, keep your eyes peeled for that, and let's move on to working groups. First of all, there's a new post in the Bevy Discord working groups channel, which now gives a small explanation and routes people to additional information. Working groups are fairly new, so this kind of direction to more information is super useful. And 14700 continues last week's work from the Curve crew that adds a curve trait for general interoperation. This is a continuation of the work described in the Curve RFC, so if you're interested in what's going on here, I encourage you to give the RFC a read. The Bevy Mod Picking Upstreaming Working Group merged some picking functionality in the last weeks, and now that's being made usable for UI elements in 14.695. You'll wanna check out the new simple picking example if you're interested in what this looks like, but basically this means you can now add the pickable component to entities, which enables it to trigger observers that can respond to pointer events like click. Functionally, this looks very similar to Bevy Mod Picking currently. So if you're familiar with Bevy Mod Picking's implementation, you'll be familiar with this new example. And that brings us into the showcases with space scheme structures. This is progress on an internal grid system for structures that is also integrated with Avian 2D. There's additional information on this in the Discord thread. So if you're interested more deeply in what's going on here, definitely go check it out. And next up, we've got a polar visualization of prime numbers. This is plotting prime numbers in polar coordinates with visually pleasing twinkling animations. It was inspired by a video from 3Blue1Brown, and what I'm showing you here is a live web demo. From up in space to down on Earth, we've got a visualization of a rotating Rubik's Cube with some additional spinny components. The additional spinny components just indicate that these are in fact individual entities and can have anything you want attached. And next up, we've got Astray. 
Astray is a space strategy game inspired by Stellaris and Aurora X4, rendered in a terminal with Ratatouille. And after a major refactor, this Path of Exile style ARPG now supports animation. Enjoy the hyper-aggressive fireball shooting enemies, which are, in fact, clones of the player. And this video, which I've sped up 2x, shows progress on Panoply, an editor built with Quill, which we've seen in previous weeks. Panoply allows for the speed of editing of a tile game, but allows for greater flexibility in tile design and placement. The overlays and grids are reactive gizmo-like drawing primitives from the Quill overlay crate. Tiles can be placed in the world using a series of thumbnails that you see here on the left, and the thumbnails are generated in a large scene with a single camera and dedicated render target. Boolean operations, as you see towards the middle of the video, are also supported. Overall, I think this is one of the most advanced Bevy editors that I've seen in recent memory, so definitely go check it out if you're interested in this kind of thing. And this Healing Spirit devlog shows up some upgrades to animations. And here you can see the character jumping, and once they are given a weapon, attacking as well. Up next, we've got a bot programming game, which after a few days of development, is in a state where there's some gameplay, where you can harvest magically regenerating rocks. This demo uses eGUI for UI, Rye is a scripting language, which as you can see on the left is how players play, and it currently uses Bevy ECS LDTK for the tile map. What is supposed to be a mining game with an excavator and destructible mountain turned into a more detailed space exploration this week. This was inspired by the big space crate. And if we fast forward a little bit here, you can see the little ship getting all the way from what is the earth to the moon. And up next, we've got this source inspired first person shooter, which introduced a number of new features and mechanics, including sprinting, inventory system, switchable weapon attachments, hit scan firing and bullet tracers, recoil, aim down sights, and aimed reloads. Next up, we've got some chess animations. The author of this in progress chess game found Bevy 0.14 animation support to be a good fit for their project. And this is KiwiBert, a Qbert inspired game built on Bevy ECS tile map and some Leafwing input manager goodness for controls. The development for this one is streamed on Twitch. And next up, we've got something that is kind of a crate, but not quite a crate release. This is an experiment in ergonomic general purpose transform interpolation. Add some marker components to granularly enable interpolation for the properties that you need. Now that you've done that, all changes that happen to the transform in a fixed update or other fixed time step schedule will be automatically smoothed. Transform can still be modified in any schedule like normal. No separate gameplay transforms needed. This approach makes the interpolation automatically compatible with physics engines and the majority of other ecosystem libraries without any modifications. Originally, this was just adding transform interpolation to Avian, but the author then thought they should try turning it into a general library. From fixed time steps to spring, spherical interpolation using numerical gradient descent, this is a method of creating smooth splines between quaternions. This starts with eight keyframe quaternions that form a closed loop, and the gradient descent doesn't work well when given too many values at once, so the authors of spring recommend gradually increasing the number of interpolation frames. And showing off some more gizmos, this is Bevy Plotting, a demo of some gizmo plotting code extracted into a repo for general use. It is also not available on crates.io, which is why it's in the showcase, so either use it as inspiration or as a Git dependency. And finally, in showcases, we've got some mesh-based rich text, which is mesh-based rich text in 3D, powered by Cosmic Text, which is also powering Bevy's UI in 0.15 with dynamic data fetching. And with that, we've made it into the crates section. Crate section this week is a little bit longer as there were some crates that I intended to include last week but did not end up including, so I'm going to include them this week. First off on the list is Bevy DJQF, which is short for Bevy Disjoint Query Filters. This crate provides macros and a trait to generate disjoint query filters for Bevy queries. In a somewhat extreme example, you can turn all of these widths and withouts, which are really only here to differentiate the queries, into something like this, which is quite a bit less typing. Bevy Mod Request also got a release. Bevy Mod Request helps when trying to use request with Bevy without having to deal with async stuff. And it works on both web and native. It now allows reacting to errors of the HTTP requests using observer style callbacks. And Bevy BSML is an interesting crate, which is a markup language and implementation inspired by Svelte and Tailwind CSS. This is interesting in the context of the scene formats that are ongoing inside of Bevy Core as well as the UI conversations. In this implementation, you create your own reusable components and handle reactivity using BSML classes. 
It's built on top of Bevy UI, so you can still use Bevy UI to manually interact with the UI node or the styles. And Bevy Serialization Extras is a library that allows the editing of non-reflect components via wrapper components, and the serialization of these components via the Moonshine Save Crate. This is potentially interesting as sometimes crate authors don't want to or forget to add reflect to their components, which can make it hard to work with in tools like Bevy Inspector eGUI as non-reflected components are not editable in the eGUI UI. And LeafWing Input Manager hit 0.15 last week. LeafWing Input Manager is a straightforward but robust input action manager for Bevy. There are full release notes, which you can read, but the highlights include clear separation of button-like, access-like, and dual-access-like inputs and actions, fully extensible trait-based definition of user input kinds, powerful access and dual-access processors, now you can invert controls, scale axes, create dead zones, and more, fixed time step support, which is a really common topic lately. This allows safely and reliably checking the action values in fixed update and support for better action disabling. LeafWing Input Manager is, in my opinion, a foundational crate in the ecosystem for handling input and mapping that to user actions. So definitely go take a look at 0.15. It's a great release. Bevy Mod Lookat is a micro plugin. That is a plugin that is meant to do one thing, help you rotate entities even through hierarchies. And Bevy HTNP provides hierarchical task network planning. This is roughly useful for AI systems and is not the only mention of hierarchical task networks that we'll see this week. Hierarchical task networks are characterized by having a concrete set of specific primitive tasks that can be compounded into a sequence that affects the world around them. Because of Bevy using an ECS, individual task primitives can be modeled with a symbol and standard Bevy system. And this plugin handles the heavy lifting of organizing those task primitives, loading and unloading specific components associated with those primitives, and cleaning up if something goes wrong. I highly recommend checking out the basic HTNP example if you're interested in this kind of system, which describes a basic problem space and registers some tasks to solve it. Bevy Gizmo Log is another interesting micro plugin. Bevy Gizmo Log lets you render gizmos through logging. The plugin self describes as this letting you render gizmos anytime, anywhere. And Doggo App, or Do Go App, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is a data oriented, goal oriented action planning library for Bevy. The crate sits somewhere between utility AI and hierarchical task networks, which is the crate we just talked about. This project has two crates Doggo App, or Do Go App, a data oriented Go App planning library and Bevy Dogo app, a Bevy library that integrates Dugo app with Bevy. Why would you use this? If you have NPCs that perform tasks that depend on each other, such as moving to a location, picking up an item, then moving to another location and dropping the item. Or if you want NPCs to be able to improvise as to how to reach a goal, AKA emergent behavior. A live demonstration can be seen on the web as you can see here, along with source code on the right hand side for what's going on. This is described as an MVP release. So if you try it out, be sure to share feedback with the crate author. And Bevy Simple Text Input 0.9 is also out this week, which gains a few features, contradicting its simple naming. This includes integration with observers, new navigation shortcuts, and improvements to multiple active input support. And this is a demo of Brusher 0.1.0. Brusher is an engine agnostic constructive solid geometry crate with a game dev focus. Brusher started as a port of CSG.js, and the API is heavily inspired by Hammer, Trench Broom, GTK Radiant, etc. Eventually, it's intended to be a full backend API that you could use to build a level editor. And if you understand the editors that we just mentioned, you should be able to grasp the API pretty easily. The crate features Boolean operations, such as union, intersect, and subtract, as well as knife operations, which allow you to slice solids with planes, which can be good for bevels. Lightyear 0.17 also got a major release this week. Lightyear is a full featured client server networking library, including an upgrade to LeafWing 0.15. 0.17 adds rollback for non-networked components, seamless entity mapping, and introduces authority transfer. Authority transfer is the concept that the peer, client or server, that is simulating the entity and sending replication updates can be changed. Only one peer can have authority over an entity at a given time, but the server can freely transfer authority of, of an entity to other peers. And bailing is defined by tiny bail, which got its 0.2 release this week, 
as an error handling pattern that takes the middle path between unwrap and a question mark, or the try operator. Compared to unwrap, bailing will return, continue, or break instead of panicking, and compared to the try operator or the question mark, bailing will log or ignore the error instead of propagating it. The library comes with a number of macros, including long form and short single letter form, which I encourage you to not use, and generally tries to improve upon the pattern of let destructure equals, which is a fairly common pattern in Bevy. Now, typically this would not be print line, it would be a warn or an error, as Bevy has infrastructure for tracing, which this example doesn't use Bevy at all. So it's a little bit of mental bandwidth to transfer what this would be outside of Bevy to a typical Bevy use case. And down in the devlog section, we've got the Bevy's fourth birthday blog post starting to roll in. This post is from Terry, who is a Bevy contributor with a Unity and mobile development background. They maintain Bevy Awesome Prod, which is a curated list of production Bevy projects. And their fourth Bevy birthday post addresses the future, the community, and the Bevy project. Similarly, BD103 has their fourth birthday post out. BD103 does amazing work on Bevy CI systems, including benchmarks and automated feature flag testing. Their post reflects on their journey in the Bevy developer community and how they even got involved in the first place. Moving on to the educational section, we've got a couple of educational posts this week. The first is a really interesting Core CTF 2024 Cybersecurity Capture the Flag competition, which had a reverse engineering challenge featuring a Bevy game called Core Mine. Core Mine is a Minecraft clone in a sense of the word, as you can see here from a couple of these screenshots. The post dives into reverse engineering Bevy, including how Bevy programs get optimized by the Rust compiler and more. And in our next post, we've got DTEX default handler in Bevy, which is an article about how you can detect non-initialized assets in Bevy. These are assets such as texture atlas default or texture default, which typically have specific handle IDs for their default implementations. And that's mostly it for this week. But if you've stuck around this long, I've got a little surprise for you. Keep in mind the next page is not going to have dark mode, so it will be a white background. And that is that Rust GPU has now transitioned to community ownership. This used to be a repo under the Embark Studios organization, but has now been taken over by the community. Rust GPU is a really interesting project that allows you to write Rust and compile it to Spear V, or Spear V, S P I R V. This theoretically, in a hypothetical future, would allow you to write Rust instead of writing WGSL. That would be for compute shaders and also graphics applications. It's a super interesting project and I'm happy to see it get some life breathed into it. And that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.